everybody. Uh, it's Dr. Rick here. Uh, end of the week. As you can imagine, it's been a pretty crazy week for me. A lot of things going on. Uh, thanks for your prayers and condolences um, as we make the final arrangements to put my mom to rest. Uh, you guys and the love you've shown me has been immense um, and uh, definitely appreciated uh, and accepted with the love in which it was given. Uh, with that, I'm going to move on into what I have to say. Um, um, and obviously for a while, if I'm not all there and I'm, I'm a little discombobulated, you guys understand. Uh, I am human, I'm not a machine, um, but uh, there are things that have to be addressed, there are things that have to be done, even in a time like this when I'm really kind of taking a lot of time to myself, there are just certain things that need to be addressed because there are certain things that need to be dealt with and we don't really have a time uh, to ignore the urgency of the moment. And one of the things that concerns me is our lack of concern for the state of affairs of our uh, communities and how that impacts our children, our marriages, our relationships, our homes, uh, things that I've written about, lectured about, done thousands upon thousands of hours of research on for the hopes of creating solutions to these enigmatic issues. Uh, as always, it's going to be a little heavier than normally uh, your, your, your latest stuff about what some dumb nut done, done um, and how it impacts the black community. This is deep, and I really want you to kind of pay attention here. Of course, a lot of people, it's not going to get a lot of clicks because it's not sensational. Uh, it's not gossip. It's not celebrity talk which is a big part of our problem. But anyway, if you like what you hear or see, click the like button, the share button, and subscribe. Um, if you believe in the work that I have done for more than 30 years in the black community, uh, if you followed me, if you've been to the site, if you've seen the work I do literally with our children, with our families, mental health, childhood adverse, uh, I mean, adverse childhood experiences, uh, childhood sexual abuse, and so much more, you know the passion I have for this black man lead, uh, literally properly racially socializing young black males to reduce violence, to reduce criminalization, to reduce incarceration. We need your support. Uh, I cannot stress that enough. Um, now, one of the things I look at is, and it goes back to that sensational thing, we want to be entertained. We have a need for escapism so we go to entertainment we go to consumerism we go to the very things that are geared to strip us of our power and our autonomy for the sake of feeling like everything is okay you know we can watch our entertainers and our celebrities and they give us the impression look where I'm at so things can't be that bad and we don't understand they represent less than 1% of our population and they're, they're not our congruent uh, and collective reality. And then we must look and see well, where is the collective resting? The vast majority are at the poverty line. Uh, the, racial, the racial wealth gap is widening. Uh, there's, an eco, there's an academic uh, and educational disparity. Uh, there is a l large uh, pervasive political impotence that is literally ripping the hearts out of blacks who have consistently over the years thought they could vote their way into freedom, uh, vote their way into power, vote their way into uh, true liberation. And now we're coming to a reality uh, that we haven't gained any ground, that we have not 
uh, moved one iota. If anything, we are regressing. Again, the wealth gap is widening. We're looking at the disproportionality at which our young black males are being referred to special education and given IEPs um, at a rate that's highly disproportionate to that of non-blacks and the massive impacts that has on their success in life and how it lines them up and sets them up for the private prison industrial complex. We are looking at the way the propaganda and the media and music has been schemed and set up to misinform, to misprogram, to mislead our youth and to put them on a path of destruction and um, ineffectiveness at the very minimum. We're looking at a situation in which there's no uh, cohesiveness within our community. The very thing that this nation has always feared is nowhere near becoming a reality, and that's black unity. J. Edgar Hoover said the thing he feared the most, the greatest threat to national security, wasn't the Soviet Union, which was um, what it is at the time, which has been reduced pretty much now. Uh, as a concern with Russia. Uh, but at that time, it was the Soviet Union and the Cold War was in full swing when this interview took place. He didn't say the Soviet Union when asked the greatest threat to national security. He didn't say Cuba. They had they just had a situation where well, a couple of years before that, you had uh, missiles aimed at the U.S. from Cuba. Uh, it wasn't that. It wasn't the Middle East where Arab countries literally uh, hated our freaking guts. Um, it wasn't the up and coming uh, regime within China. It was black unity. His concern was black unity. And he wasn't just talking out of the side of his neck. He was showing you with what he's doing, the greatest amount of energy and effort in any one collect collective, uh, isolated and uh, penetrated way was uh, Cointel Pro, which was designed to infiltrate black uh, organizations like the Black Nationalist Party, the Black Panther Party, and other um, programs and political uh, political parties that were set up to unify the black community, to create autonomy in the black community, to create cohesiveness and, and create an environment and culture of self-love. They were targeted and attacked they sit up and focused on this, not only uh, disrupting the Black Nationalist Party, the Black Panther Party, but they understood that it was the, the upwardly mobile black family that was funding those communities. So they went on an all out assault on the black family. They deindustrialized the inner city, which meant the black man who was getting livable wages from warehouses, manufacturing plants and, and, and the such, was no, li no longer now employed or at the very best uh, underemployed. And then they pulled the vocational programs that prepare black males to come out of school prepared to learn earn a living wage like wood shop, auto mechanics, electrician uh, programs, uh, pull them out. And so then you're, you're sitting up now and they, everybody's focused and told, hey, you need to go out and get a degree, which only puts you in debt and doesn't anywhere come close, doesn't come anywhere close to preparing you to go out and support a family. It's not preparing you to do the things that our men need to be doing. And I can go on and on and on about the things that we are facing and we are taking lightly because we're too busy uh, gossiping about this or uh, co-signing BS, uh, uh, sitting up and trying to marginalize and minimum, minimal, minimal, uh, minimize uh, the impact of so much of this nefarious uh, structure and uh, the, the, the mechanisms and the machinations, machinations that are literally designed and aimed and uh, put out for the very sake and the very reason and the very purpose of keeping us at bay. And we are not doing a good enough job. One of the things that I'm doing right now, and I really do need your support on this, is 
I have a lot of people who come to me with adult uh, male children or adult brothers or siblings or whatever, but uh, predominantly black males who are suffering with legitimate uh, psychological, psychological and mental disorders and they can't get any help for them because they're adults. And these policies, these state policies, these local policies, and in some instances, federal policies, uh, inhibit any type of intervention until these people have done something to either harm someone else or harm themselves. And this is too late. This is after the fact. This is reacting to something we have, we have a, a, a capacity and ability to mitigate. And there's no policy out there. And I've got so many families. And the crazy thing is, sometimes you sit up and say, okay, this is an economic issue. Uh, we don't have the resources. But I have clients who can afford it. I have affluent black families who can afford it. But it's simply nothing you can do. I'm talking about they're willing to pour money into it, but it's nothing you can do. Then I have a bunch of families who don't have the resources. So they are really, truly at bay because they don't not only have the resources, they don't have any way to kind of do anything. Those families who uh, can afford, they can come and get me and I can do the best I can to reach their uh, loved ones. But again, for a person to be reached, they have to admit something's wrong and they have to be they want to be reached. Here's the problem that we have with this. We talk about the 1.5 million uh, black men who are missing, and I tell you all the time that 1.3 of those are in prison, making up the majority of the population when we only make up 6% of the uh, free population. I tell you that all the time, but a, a significant, uh, port, another significant portion of that are homeless. They're homeless. And it's because they are struggling with mental disorders that they cannot get the proper intervention and the proper care for. And that is negatively impacting the black community. Because with the right treatment, and I'm not a medication person. I'm not real. I want to try everything other than anything synthetic. Definitely not psychotropic drugs. But when you can look at some things, especially when you're talking about any part of uh, paranoia like schizophrenia and bipolar disorders on certain levels when you start talking about those things you need to have the ability to uh, stabilize that and sometimes medication is the only way but you got to have them on the medication for them to even realize they need help and participate in intervention innovative processes and that's the problem you got people on the street because they didn't get what they needed because they hadn't killed themselves or hurt someone else yet. That has to stop. So the next year I'm actually doing extensive research on the impact so I can literally point to exact numbers, how it's not just how many of them are ending up on the street, but how that directly impacts the community, how that impacts other things like adverse childhood experiences, where one of the aces is someone in your family being diagnosed with a mental disorder. Another is having uh, a parent not being present or uh, for, for, for a number of different reasons. And so how is this impacting that? How is it impacting the home? How is it impacting the job market? How is it in, impacting economic uh, uh fluidity and economic um, growth in the black community. There are so many different areas in which this is happening and we're not looking at it and we need to understand what's going on. Uh, so I'm going to be doing this. Uh, and once I'm done, I'm actually going to take my findings and I'm going to uh, create a pack to actually start pushing it first locally and, and, and on the state level because those are the places that you can see it change but I'm going to create it and it's going to take work because each state has different ways and different policies so those have, each state is going to have to have its own individual uh, presentation put together but we're going to do this thing because it has to be done and I need your support to get something this big done I have the wherewithal to do it but it's no way that I can do it on my own. I need your support. So again, I'm asking you guys, we need to go deep this time because this, this is major. Uh, if, you can, if you can only see the number of people who are coming to me with this being a problem, I'm gonna actually be on uh, the, I'm gonna be on the um, Sunrise Project, which is a, uh, an OWN podcast. Uh, it's sponsored by OWN. Um, 
I am a resident expert there. I've been on that for about four or five years, uh, but I'm gonna be speaking on the mental health uh, issue with black men in November. Uh, I think November the 6th, it's a Sunday, I'll be on there. Uh, if you wanna get on, we're gonna talk about this and we're gonna go deep into it then, but we need to be doing something about it now. So on that note, look, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. If you believe in the work I'm doing, show some love. Uh, hit the like button, hit the uh, share button, but show some love and show some support. This thing needs a boost. And if anybody out there that is literally a legitimate researcher, understands uh, scientific method, uh, understands um, uh, how to work through concepts, hypotheses, and theories, uh, definitely reach out to me. Uh, anybody with a background in sociology, psychology, penology, uh, criminology, um, definitely reach out. Uh, because I'm going to need to put together a team of brilliant minds to work this out. Uh, I'm going to head and spearhead it, and I'm getting started because it's it, it, it's monumental and it needs to be done. And I'm not one for putting up excuses. I'm not for one for saying, "Well, I wanted to do it, but no, I'm going to do it, and I can I can only do it at the pace that I can." But for every day that goes by, we're losing our brothers. And let, let, let me let me be clear on this. When I say losing my brothers, it's because they are the predominant uh, gender in this, but we're losing sisters too. It's an issue with our sisters too, but there are other different paths that they go through that sort of catch some of them uh, because they are just more programs. The brothers have very few places they can fall uh, before they hit rock bottom. And so we need to be able to give help and we, we have a tendency to throw ours away. We tend to think if they're homeless, that's because they want to be. And we're the most underemployed, underemployed and unemployed group in the U.S. And we need to start asking why. That's going to be a part of the study. What policies are in place? What practices are in place that are facilitating this disparity? We need to have these understandings. We lose so consistently and frequently because we don't understand how things work and we get constantly played and pushed, manipulated and controlled, mishandled and mistreated because we don't understand how things work. It's time that we develop an understanding of how things work and start making moves to combat those things. On that note, I'm out of here again. Show your love and support. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.